today I'm looking at how I dialed in my cold start routine on my 95 Mustang GT with my new 408 engine. I'm using Clint Garrity's binary editor and a Moats quarter horse in my application. Before I get into the meat and potatoes of the video, let's review a couple preconditions that you need to have complete before you even proceed. The first thing is a vehicle that runs and idles on its own, both in neutral and drive, when the vehicle has reached operating temperature. It should run very smoothly throughout the range of the lower math curve, say up to at least two, two and a half volts. You should have your math curve fully dialed in. It should be very, very smooth and you shouldn't have any problems at all with the math curve going rich or going lean on you. If you know you have problems in this area, you definitely need to correct those before proceeding with this video. EFIDynotuning.com backslash MAF has several math curves you can use as your templates. If you're still having problems, you probably want to look at this, get a correct template, and then again, make sure the math curve is thoroughly dialed in. If you're having issues dialing in your math curve, I did a video on how I dialed mine in. Regardless of where you got your math curve, it doesn't really matter. You're going to definitely have to tune it and dial it in. Unless it came off a vehicle that was identical to yours, prepared with a professional tuner tuning the vehicle, you're definitely going to have to make some adjustments in the math curve. Next have on the must-have completed list is making sure that you thoroughly dialed in your idle air functions. Both functions 875, N, and D should be dialed in correct for the point in which you're going to operate. For purposes of this video, I choose both drive and neutral to be the same RPM and tune accordingly. Note that in this video, I've decided to make both of these functions linear. They're not. But since I'm picking a single point on each one of the curves, I can tune to that point and it all should come back to that same point whenever I go into an idle condition. Now, for purposes of this video, I'm defining dialed in as being about 50 to 75 RPM over desired. I'd set both of your idle RPM numbers somewhere around 750 to 850. The reason I'm picking idle numbers so high is during the tuning process, you're likely to encounter both overshoots and undershoots. And if the undershoots get too severe, the vehicle may die on you. Okay, guys and gals, if you get nothing else outside of this video, remember the following lessons, because it took me days and days to figure all this out. Running too rich of a mixture, especially at cold startup, is a major, major cause of surge. If there's one thing for sure you want to make sure that you don't have, is too rich of a mixture. You want to reduce any mixture enhancements as fast as possible. Just as long as the car doesn't bog, you're on the right track. I'm still experimenting with cold timing lockout during startup. I'm not totally convinced that it makes a big difference about locking out the timing, but you do see ignition spikes. And those ignition spikes are followed by RPM spikes. You also definitely want to keep actual RPM and desired RPM as close to each other as possible. It seems to make a pretty good difference in the depth and the breadth of the spikes and whether or not you get multiple overshoots and undershoots. And probably to no one's surprise, the colder the engine, the worse the surge conditions. To make things come up and idle smoothly, you definitely want to increase the RPM at startup. And I'm finding I actually need to increase it all the way to 130 to 150 degrees. Generally speaking, about 1200 RPM seems about right. Okay, let's look at my data log. First item on the list is discerning which pin is which. In this particular case, this first yellow pin is RPM. This next yellow pin, looking like a square wave, is actually transmission shift position. The top position is neutral, the middle position is reverse, and the lower position is drive. For this next yellow pin, this yellow line is total ignition timing. This final yellow pin is per load, or percent of idle loading. This next data log is transmission selection, desired RPM, and actual RPM. There are several things to note in this data log. Number one, my function 1862D definitely needs to be dialed in. This may also include making some changes to the function 18, which is the scalar for the time axis. My aluminum heads are taking longer to warm up. The other thing to note here is the RPM spikes are getting smaller and smaller 
relative to uh, previous spikes in a colder engine. Note the definite trend as the engine warms up for the positive RPM spike to get less and less. Note that the positive RPM spikes are taking place as I shift from drive back into neutral and a smaller negative going spike occurs when I shift from neutral back into drive. This data log clearly shows that uh, the ignition spikes are clearly showing up in the RPM as spikes as well. I'm not sure of the relationship here. Still working to some degree on this. These next two screenshots still definitely show I've still got some work to do. My 862D function still needs some tuning. Again, I probably need to scale the time function as well. As of right now, I'm not planning on making any changes to my 862N function. That one. For those of you that know these things, I'm not using function 371, drive engagement multiplier versus engine cooling temperature. Okay, let's look at a couple of my tables, starting with function 1361. This is the fuel startup table, the first one the computer gets into on a cold vehicle. In my case, you'll notice that about 30 seconds in, all my enrichment is gone. I found out this made a big difference in surge by taking this time back. Also, I'm providing no enrichment after the engine reaches 162 degrees Fahrenheit. Next on my list is function number 1362. This is the fuel base table. This is the one that uh, kicks in after the startup table is done, but before the main stabilized table takes over. One of the things I've never been totally clear on is do tables 1361 and 1362 are they additive with each other? Obviously, there's some overlap and range for the first few seconds of startup. If somebody out there knows, I'd definitely appreciate a comment on it. The one thing to note here is all my enrichment is gone once the engine reaches 90 degrees. I found out this helped a lot with surge too, especially those big RPM spikes. Finally, here's my fuel stabilized table. This one pretty well takes over after the engine has reached an operating temperature. Okay, time to take a look at Spark. This first table is function 2000, the Spark cold start table. What I'm really doing here is locking ignition timing to 26 degrees total for the first 60 seconds or until the engine reaches operating temperature. This next table is function 2001, which is the Spark cold start adder table. What I'm doing here is locking in that 26 degrees timing below 1500 rpm and below 42 percent load for the startup period i found out that using these two tables eliminated most of those wild surges you get when you first put the engine into gear on a very cold start and here's my current function 2200 or the sport borderline table this one's still somewhat of a work in progress. The car runs real good with this and starts up without any trouble. No major spikes, no major engine stalling, but I still definitely like to do a little bit more work with this one. This next one is function 825A, idle RPM adder for engine coolant temperature. I found out that this one was definitely one you had to dial in. My aluminum heads take a long time to warm up. And this was the best way to get a quick stable idle. This next one is function 1862N, which is the idle airflow multiplier in neutral. This is one that's still definitely under development. I think it's a lot closer than the drive function is, but still needs some work. Main thing I'm going to probably wind up doing on this one is rescale the left side function 18 time scaler. I think it needs a little more time with my aluminum heads. This next function is 1862D, idle airflow multiplier in drive. This one still has a lot of work to do on it. The car is very drivable, but I'm still convinced I can get rid of some of the positive spikes out of it if I can dial it in a little better. These next two screenshots are all of my scalers, pretty much stock U4P2 stuff. Remember this video is both for education and edification. You can teach me a few things. I can probably teach you a few things. Hopefully we can start working through some of these problems, especially on cold startup together. For those of you that would like to know these things, here is a complete list of the hardware that I'm running. By all means, this video is not a finished product. I fully intend to continue development. My main 
problem right now is, of course, I'm quarantined like the rest of you with this COVID-19 business. As soon as they lift the stay-at-home order, I'll go out and do some more development work. Till then, I'm kind of grounded. Putting this out there so everybody can start thinking about it and hopefully they can get back. We can do some more solid work on this and improve it where we can all enjoy our vehicles a little better. Until then, take care. Y'all have a great day and stay safe with COVID.